Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to introduce you to the idea of inventory cost flows. Now we're going to kick this off with two questions for thought. And here's question number one. If a grocery store buys 50 gallons of milk for $1 per gallon, gallon on January 5th, and then another 50 gallons for $1.25 per gallon on January 7th, but only 50 of those gallons are still in the warehouse on January 30th. What is the cost of those goods in the warehouse? In other words, they bought 100 gallons total, but some of those gallons were bought at a dollar, some of those gallons were bought at $1.25, half of those gallons were sold, half of those gallons are still behind. Are the half gallons, are the, are, are the 50 gallons that are still behind worth $50? and that's what you put as inventory on your balance sheet, a dollar per gallon, or are they worth $62.50? And that's what you put on your balance sheet, a dollar twenty-five per gallon. Now, in reality, it's probably a mix, right? There's probably some of the dollar gallons still there. There's probably some of the dollar twenty-five gallons still there. Now, why is that the case? Well, if you think about it, when you put the milk out, say, on the store shelves, you're going to have that milk and it's in racks and, you know, you train your um, employees to put the older stuff in front so customers buy the older stuff first. But then you have customers who know that that's how the game works. And so they go in the store and they dig toward the back and they find the milk with the longest expiration, the newest milk, and they'll buy it and ignore the stuff in the front, right? And so in reality, if you have 50 of your total 100 gallons still left at the end of the day, it's probably, in reality, some of them were worth a dollar, some of them were worth a dollar twenty-five. Now, how do we deal this from an accounting perspective? Well, the fact is, you've got to make a choice. Because unless you're tracking those individual gallons of milk separately, which is a very costly and meticulous thing to do, you really don't know what's still there. You don't know if all 50 of them were a dollar or if all 50 of them were a dollar twenty-five. But the accounting system is going to let you choose, and we'll talk about those choices shortly. Here's another anecdote for you, similar situation. How about a computer retailer who buys 100 computers for $600 each on January 5th? They buy 100 more of those same computers for $650 each on January 7th, so $50 more expensive. Maybe a component went into shortage, and so the price got driven up. Who knows? If only half of those computers are still in the warehouse at January 30th, what was their cost? Similar to the milk, the answer is it's probably a mix. Because what happens is these computers either get put out on a sales floor, or more likely, um, one model gets put out on the sales floor, and then when a customer wants it, an employee goes into the warehouse, grabs a box, brings it to the customer. Now, these computers are identical. So, the warehouse employee, he doesn't know which box he's grabbing. Is he grabbing a $600 box or a $650 box? He doesn't know. He probably doesn't care. And the customer doesn't know or care either. But you've got to be able to value what's on your balance sheet. So do you say that the computers that are left are worth $600 or do you say they're worth $650? Just like the milk, the accounting system is going to give us a choice. Those choices are called cost flows. We have to decide how will the cost of our inventory flow through our accounting system? Okay, Inventory is valued as the sum of the cost incurred to obtain it and prep it for sale. In our previous examples, we just had the price tag. What did you pay to get it? Right. But if you paid freight or insurance, something of that nature, to get it as well, all of that would be included. But by accounting rule, inventory should be valued at what you paid for it. Now, U.S. GAAP allows for four choices on how you are going to track the flow of the cost of that inventory through your system. The first choice you see here, specific identification, that's what I mentioned with the milk, where I said, what if you track every single gallon of milk individually, right? So track each item and therefore its associated cost individually. Now, this would require putting a separate barcode on everything. This would require being able to tell one item apart from the next. And it would require every single instance of that item having a unique entry in the accounting system with a unique price associated with it. As you, as you can imagine, that's, that's pretty meticulous and that's pretty resource intensive to do. The next option you're given is what's called first in, 
first out. This is probably best suited for our situation like the grocery store. You assume that if you bought it first, you sold it first. So if I back up to the milk example, in this situation, we would assume that because we bought the dollar gallons first, that those have sold. And since we bought the $1.25 gallon second, those are what is left, and we would choose B. We would choose $62.50. Now, does that mean that the grocer has to use this method? Do they have to use first in, first out? Absolutely not. They don't have to. But it makes sense given their business, right? Think about groceries. They go bad. And so you want to sell the older stuff first. So you're selling what you purchased first. You're arguably selling it first. And so for a grocer, first in, first out actually makes the most sense. But they're not required to do it that way. Another option, last in, first out, you can assume bought last sold first. All right, so this is fitting for something like our computer example. When it comes to things like technology or fashion, things where consumers tend to like the newer item rather than the older item, it is safe to kind of take the stance of, well, whatever you bought most recently is the thing the consumer will have probably bought because they like the most recent stuff. And whatever you bought first is probably still left over in your warehouse. And so in the computer example, if you were following last in, first out, what we call LIFO, you would choose A here. You would choose to value the computers at $600, the earlier price paid. Now, again, if you're a technology company or a fashion company, do you have to do this? No. You can choose your method. That's the, that's the benefit of US GAAP. You can choose your choice. But you can see where there are certain choices that are better fits for certain types of businesses. Last up, final choice, average cost. Average cost is you assume every item costs the same based on average price paid. And you can see this doesn't really fit necessarily the milk example or the computer example, um, as well as say LIFO and FIFO did, um, but it is it, it makes a lot of sense, right? Because you just say, well, I have a pile of inventory. I bought everything at different prices. Therefore, why don't I just average all the prices together, figure out on average, what is each one worth? And I just value them all the same. That's what average cost does. And that's a very kind of logical way to look at your inventory. So. You have four choices. You don't have to use any one. However, as I've pointed out to you, um, some are better fits than others. And the key is really what I say down here at the bottom. No matter which one you choose, you should stick with it. You should be consistent across your years of operations. That way you can help make your financial statements more useful to investors. All right, that's your introduction to cost flows. I'll have plenty of other videos going deep dive into the different types of cost flows with the different examples to kind of illustrate them. But hopefully this gave you a good primer. Hopefully you found it helpful. And I hope you join me for another video.